Never is the spirit of Christmas more keenly felt than after midnight mass. And so, with festive sentiments of Christian compassion, I left the warmth of St. Cuthbert's in Wensley village on Christmas Eve of 1888 and headed out into the rural darkness of midwinter. Although I felt the cruel sting of winter's bite beneath my overcoat, the moonlight shone so brilliantly upon the frost-covered Sussex landscape that I could not resist the temptation to take the scenic route home through the woods. I strode briskly to aid circulation, but I must admit that my pace dwindled with my spirits as the leafless oak boughs crowded in around me and the silence of the wood was broken by the shriek of a barn owl echoing without answer between the solemn and ancient trees. Despite the moon's eerie radiance, the wood allowed little light through to illuminate the white frost that coated each twig and branch, and so I strained my eyes to keep to the thin path which, though familiar to me, seemed ever more alien as I progressed deeper into the forest. Accepting that I was lost, I tried to raise my spirits with thoughts of the village swasslers singing for cider, and of the warm mulled wine I would allow myself before bed. But these visions were shattered by a sudden sense of dread, at the sight of a hellish bulk moving through the gloom toward me. It was a well-built man wielding an axe, as his powerful form slipped from the shadows into the pale light of the moon, I realized that it was no son of Adam, but some demonic creature, adorned with medieval armor and foliage. I thought to run, or even drop to my knees in prayer, but my limbs were petrified as though bewitched, and were not released until the figure let out a hearty laugh and cried, Who be thou to think ye knowest the spirit of Eula? Yet before the grain a knight shrinketh. I recalled from school the legend of the Green Knight who visited the court of King Arthur on Christmas to teach the knights of Christian virtues. This was no demon. I am a good Christian, Sir Knight, with great compassion for my fellow man, I explained. Please do not harm me. The dark face twisted with scorn. Then he beckoned me to follow, and I, through sheer fear, complied. The woods and the path remained unfamiliar, and the trees larger and more numerous than I had recalled from my daylight walks. But ahead I heard, with relief, the sound of merriment and the smell of a log fire. As we drew near to the source of the noise, I saw what seemed to be an unusually long thatched cottage without windows. The night moved silently over the hard rhyme, as though his great frame carried no weight at all. The only sound was the savage, rhythmic chanting from within the cottage. He strode to the door and pushed it open, beckoning me inside. But I stepped not into a cottage, but a grand mead hall, like those of Anglo-Saxon antiquity. About a long table stood tall masked men, adorned in furs and bright clothes of an almost oriental style, woven with ornate patterns. I shrunk in horror at the terrifying sight of the enormous spears and short swords which they waved aloft and then rhythmically pounded together in time to a primitive and unholy chanting. At first, I could not decipher the screams beneath their hideous mask, but as I gathered my senses, I realized it was a single word. You. Yule, Yule, repeated over and over like some cannibal jungle tribe, mocking the sacred day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Transfixed in terror, I had not yet thought to flee, but by the time the notion gripped me it was too late, for they had stopped and turned toward me in silence. A large man adorned with gold jewelry stood at the head of the table and removed his horn mask to reveal a fierce bearded face. Do you guest enter my hall to worship the father of Yule? He boomed. Of course, I replied. I uh, am a pious Englishman who loves the season as much as any other. I am ever so sorry for disturbing you, only then I... you shall drink of the mead horn with us, he shouted while raising his arms, a signal which prompted the whole hall to erupt into merriment. The men laid down their weapons 
and removed their masks and skins of wolves, bears and boars to reveal, to my surprise, typically English faces that one may find in any church. Then beautiful girls appeared, bearing enormous horns gilt with gold foil and brimming with what I assumed to be honey mead. One was handed to the master of the hall, who raised it aloft and cried out, To the Yule Father! Hey! Then he drank a long draught, and the horns were passed around. Still cold from the forest, I was gratefully warmed by the sweet spice brew. And drinking, I wondered why these peculiarly costumed yet fully grown fellows were drinking a toast to Father Christmas. I assumed they were mummers or actors from some travelling pantomime. Two strangely costumed young ladies brought an enormous steaming cauldron to the table, and then each man was served a portion of pungent meat and broth from the cauldron. The meat was rather tough, I must say, but the broth fortifying, and I ate heartily until, to my horror, a man next to me turned and said, This was a noble and strong horse. His sacrifice will appease Woden and strengthen our people. <coughs> I spat out the meat in horror. Sir, I am not so hungry that I would resort to eating some village nag. And who, may I ask, is Woden? At that moment, I was startled by a splash across my face. Opening my eyes, I saw that I and the fellow next to me had been speckled with dark red liquid. Woden is the roaring father of Yule, for whom we spill the hlort, my neighbour said incredulously. Then a man dressed in white vestments carried a bowl of liquid into which he dipped a bundle of sticks with which he splashed the liquid upon us and the walls and everyone else. Then he moved to the back of the hall to where a tall wooden post stood upon which a most gruesome face was carved. What is Lord? I asked nervously as the man in white solemnly splashed liquid onto the post. It is the blood of the finest white horse which we spill as an offering to Woden. Horrified, I realised I was covered in blood and implicated in some ungodly pagan ritual. Longbeard, victory giver, shouted the master, who stood before the meat cauldron. I, the Earl, dedicate this horse meat and blood to you, the Yule Father. Jan Grimmer, iron mask we call you, and wear your masks with your raven tie above. Hey! Hildofer, Battle Wolf, and Brun Bear we call you, and wear these skins on the field of war where you choose from the fallen. O ruler of heaven, bring our people victory for another year. Hey! Bile began to rise in my throat as I realized I had partaken of some satanic parody of the Eucharist. Before I could be sick, I leapt to my feet and burst out the door where the green knight stood laughing. I hurtled wildly through harsh thorns and brambles of the wood without care for my clothes or skin until I finally collapsed. Eventually, I found my way home, but I remained bedridden with sickness and anxiety for a week. No one believed my incredible story, of course, but I will never forget it. The Green Knight lifted the Christian veil of Christmas which had concealed the ancient ways of Yule which my ancestors had known long ago.